We all have a preferred language that we communicate in. For Van Gogh, his favorite language was colors. Each and every painting that he has created is a glowing essay of all the things that he wanted to communicate with us and is still communicating with us. All the portraits that he created of his dear friend Joseph Rowland are an amazing examples of how good of a communicator he was. Today we will try to have a conversation with Van Gogh by recreating his beautiful portrait of his friend and maybe in these portraits he will convey to us how he really felt about his friend. So when you are recreating this portrait of Van Gogh's best friend, uh, think about your best friend and maybe through this process you would be able to have a conversation with Van Gogh himself. There are about eight to nine portraits of Joseph Rowland that we know of, which includes oil painting and also a few sketches. I find myself most drawn to this particular portrait of him. There is just something about his expression over here, which I absolutely love. I will be painting on this watercolor pad, but feel free to use canvas or a normal paper. This is the painting from my previous art session, which is also a Van Gogh. It is called the Reaper. If you would like to recreate this, you can go through the Reaper video. For your ease of process, I have also created an outline of the Rowland painting which you can download and use as a reference. The easiest way of transferring this is obviously through a carbon or transfer paper. But if you want a more authentic art experience, then I will teach you the grid method that all of the artists use to transfer their references on their basis. So what we are going to start with is creating a grid on top of our reference. Now, since this reference is rectangle in shape, we will be left with a little bit extra after adding 3 cross 3 square grid on top of the reference. I find it easiest when my grid sections are in square and not in rectangle. So for this particular one, I am left with 3 cross 3.5 grid and some of them will need more attention like this one. So I will subdivide just that square to facilitate more details. Not having a denser grid will allow you to have a cleaner painting process. Once you are happy with your reference, you are going to create the same grid or scaled up grid onto the surface that you want to paint on. Make sure that all the lines that you have drawn are very very faded so they are easy to erase after you are done transferring your image. Pro tip, using a sharpened pencil is must. Blunt tip will just leave darker impressions and it will be very difficult for you to erase. Also, it is very easy to scuff up those marks rather than the ones which are made with sharp pencil. It might feel a little intimidating drawing an entire portrait, but take your time and focus on one mark at a time. See where exactly it is positioned inside the grid and slowly transfer it with feather hands. It is completely okay to make happy mistakes because you can just erase them and go over again. You can find a link to this reference in the description. Remember that it's perfectly okay just to use a transfer paper and create the undersketch for your painting. The ultimate purpose of art is to relax and have a good time. I can imagine that Van Gogh felt the same way when he spent time with his friend. Once you're happy with your undersketch, we will use a kneadable eraser to soften the undersketch and to remove any extra graphite which is on the paper. You can easily find kneadable eraser in any art store or if you search on internet, you will find many DIYs to create your own at home. Along with softening your impression, you will also remove any grid lines that you don't need anymore. Next, I will use washi tape to create boundary around my painting. That that is going to ensure that I have nice white boundary all around my painting and I don't have to worry about paint spilling outside. Now that our under sketch and our paint surface is ready, we will move on to painting it. I have been using this Hemi gouache paint for a very long time now and I cannot recommend them enough for artists at any stage of their journey. They come with a palette and brushes and you can see how much I use it by the state of my palette. For the painting process, we will start with an undercoat of orange color. You can see that I'm scooping just a little bit of color and then using my large flat brush, I will add a lot of water to the color and mix it to create a very runny paste. This is the kind of consistency that you're looking for. Almost transparent orange water without any lumps. Now apply a layer of this wash on top of your painting. Adding a base coat allows you to understand the highlights and the shadows in a much better way. Once you're done with the base coat, allow it to sit 
and let it dry completely. Gouache are a water-based medium, which means water is our best friend. It is necessary to keep washing your brush every single time so as to avoid cross-contamination of colors, which is also why you should keep refreshing your colored water. I found this device online which helps me get fresh water every single time. I was kind of reluctant in the beginning, but it actually works pretty good. Does the mechanism work flawlessly? No but there is nothing that a little troubleshooting cannot solve. I also like my colors and my painting smelling amazing. So I have this spray bottle which I used to prep my gouache paint. This spray bottle is filled with just water but I also add a little bit of fragrance oil. This oil is water soluble and it smells like rain. I bought this in Australia from a brand called Makeru. And this is just one of those art hacks that I cannot live without. This leaves my art space smelling amazing, which puts me at really good mood. Now coming back to the painting, we will always start with the background. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Van Gogh used to talk through colors. So while you are adding the colors to this painting, don't be afraid to switch them around. I will be using the same colors as Van Gogh did, but please free to add your own flair to your painting. To create that tone, I've added green, mustard and cream. Cream color. While you are mixing your colors, always remember to start with the lightest color and slowly introduce the darker tones to it. We do this because it's very easy to make the light colors dark but the other way around is not that easy. You see me removing the colors using a palette knife. I do this so my colors don't get contaminated too easily and I am left with enough color on my palette to mix properly. Now using a small flat brush, mix your color properly and remember to keep adding water. Gouache paints at default are very pasty and hard hard but by adding water we want to bring them to a consistency of a shampoo or conditioner. Once your color is prepped and you are happy with it, block your entire background with that color. Take your time making each impression. And I might sound like a kindergarten teacher but start with an outline around Joseph Rowland so you do not get any background color in that area. You can see that I am making small impression that will leave me with little bit of texture in the background which will go well with the post impressionist technique. Take your time covering the entire background and once you are done leave it alone to dry. Once your background is dry, we will switch to a very thin liner brush and start adding the wallpaper details on our background. Most of the Rowland family portraits have beautiful texture in the background which kind of indicates that their home probably had nice flurry wallpapers. The textures that Van Gogh added to these backgrounds were very fine and intricate. And to recreate the same fine line, it is very important to add a lot of water to your color before you put it on the canvas. Along with prepping my color, I am also prepping my brush by rotating it like this, so I end up with fine pointy tip. By rotating my brush on the palette like this, I am removing all the excess colors so I am left with just enough to add my intricate details. Another pro tip. Always hold your brush like a pencil or a pen, which means your thumb and finger should be on the shiny part of the brush. Now with the least amount of pressure, one impression at a time, start adding the details. To stabilize my hand a little bit more, I also stop breathing while I'm making my impressions. If you really think about it, the paint process is truly very meditative. Make your way through the background one color at a time. Pay attention to each little detail that Van Gogh added to the painting. It's really important for you to enjoy the process and not get lost in the expectation of the outcome. The background of this painting looks so bright and vibrant. But Van Gogh didn't use a lot of colors in it. There are maybe maximum 4 to 5 colors and yet he made it look so beautiful. Now that we are done with the background, we will move on to the face. Needless to say, in a portrait face is the most important part. And a post-impressionist Van Gogh style of painting has a lot of dashes in it, which applies in face as well. So we will begin by working on the eyes and make our way outwards. Pay attention to the highlights, mid-tones and the darker areas of the face. And using the same detailing brush we use for the background, we will add tiny little dashes on the entire face. Keep your reference right next to you so you can look back and forth as often as you need. When it comes to skin color, for making it dark, you can add brown instead of black. And of course, for making it light, you can use direct white color. Van Gogh paintings are all about the layers, so keep building them up. You will also see a lot of dashes of pop colors like orange and red, blues and greens hidden in the skin colors. Just remember, while using these colors, less is more. When you start working on the mustache and the beard, try to maintain the consistency with the flow of hair 
care. Take breaks in between to appreciate your work. The imperfections in the paintings are very evident. It was very important to Van Gogh to represent his friend exactly how he was. The sincere representation of Rowland represents the deep respect Van Gogh had for him. Now each part of the painting has unique set of colors and I like to lay them all on my palette before moving on to painting it. Joseph's beard is probably the most prominent feature on his face. And while working on it, we will go from the darkest color towards the lightest color. When it comes to post-impressionist painting, it looks like there are outlines. But if you look closely, they are just combination of small dashes of colors, which gives these painting their graphic heavy look looking more like cartoons with heavy outlines. His beard carries that starry night Van Gogh texture in the most beautiful and prominent way. Joseph Rowling reminds me of a happy but younger Santa Claus, but he was a postman and a very proud one too. The first impression because of his uniform and stature gives him a feeling of more authority. When I first saw his paintings, I thought he was a navy or army, but the text on top of his hat clears up that confusion. Again, you saw me collecting all the colors on my palette before I moved on to color his cap. I started off with blocking all the darker colors and then progressed to the lighter ones. Van Gogh predominantly uses Persian blue color, which was the new and exotic color during his time. This color was influenced by the newly introduced Japanese art to the European market. Van Gogh fell in love with the Japanese prints and the influence of artists like Hokusai is clearly visible in all his art. For this painting, majorly I have been using the same liner brush because here we are not really blocking colors we are hatching them one tiny impression at a time coming to the uniform of our favorite postman it was a very important part of his identity and van gogh clearly recognized that this particular portrait has a very small part of his uniform visible, but in another portrait that he did of Rowlin, golden buttons, embroidered sleeves, gives his uniform a grand stature. Take your time adding all the little dashes, blocking tiny little sections of his uniform. Once you are done, scan your entire painting and add your final touches. This is my favorite part of the art process. Removing the tape feels like unwrapping my gift. I have recreated this painting multiple times and each time it comes out a little different. The most difficult part about creating art is knowing when to stop. It's very difficult to be satisfied as an artist. But I have a silly or profound theory about creating art. The painting that you are creating, it pre-exists. They are just using you as a medium to come to life. So do not worry too much about perfecting everything. They have to be the way they are supposed to be. So just enjoy the process and yeah, love the painting that you have created. That is the end of our session. I hope you had a great time recreating Van Gogh's friend Joseph Rowling with me. Uh, I hope that this process has given you a little bit of idea of how to create portraits and maybe you will create a portrait of your own friend or yourself with what you have learned in the process of making this one. I would love to see your creation so share your masterpieces with me on any of the social media. I go by Art by Harshi and until next time, goodbye.